Um, as you all know, probably now more than ever, the environment and environmental issues are hotter than ever. No matter where you look, no matter where you read, no matter where you listen, you see people talking about the environment, whether it's in your day-to-day -day jobs or when you come home at night and pick up the paper um, or turn on the news, it is there. Um, whether you're listening to presidential politics, whether you're like myself dealing with the state and local legislatures, uh, whether it's in the courtroom like some of you here today, or whether it's in your manufacturing facilities or your businesses around the state, the environment and environmental issues are probably one of the top issues that we're facing as we move forward as a country and as a state. And how we address those is very critical to our success and our ability to move forward. And What's the impact on the environment? A couple of things I should say. First, we are going to have a different president, 44th president of the United States. We're going to have a new governor of Missouri. And among others, these will affect the environment through personnel, budgets, policy making, and policy priorities. Oops. Personnel, quickly, the new uh, president will appoint a new EPA director and new heads of energy, interior, agriculture, justice, transportation, and state. Here are some of the appointments that George Bush has made. All these people will be replaced except the last one. These have been critically important for environmental policy. And maybe as important as anybody else is the Chief Justice. I tell my students, and I can tell you, think of your age, imagine it, add 30 to that. John Roberts would probably be Chief Justice when you're that age. Jay Nixon, very interesting. Jay Nixon does not have anything on the environment on his campaign website. Governor Nixon will face more constraints than President Obama if they're both elected. The Missouri legislature will stay Republican. Uh, Governor Nixon will care a great deal about rural and suburban votes. Uh, they also are all going to defend Missouri interests like the uh, pulse of the Missouri River and Missouri's resistance to stricter clean air standards. Um, let's see, oh yeah, uh, next to last slide, the politics of nuclear power are going to be very interesting to me. McCain supports 40 plus new plants. Obama supports moving forward if the waste problem can be solved. There's no evidence that it can. Barnwell's uh, low level nuclear waste disposal site is now closed to most states. And the Yucca Mountain high level waste site is in the home of the Democratic Senate Majority Leader. Uh, guess what's going to happen to that? Not much. The opening presentation talked about the fact that we're heading into the election season. And I get questions all the time, what does that mean for enforcement and compliance of what EPA is going to do? And my short answer to that question is, on the enforcement world, nothing. I think uh, it will be in the enforcement world business as usual. I've been through four or five administration changes, and the one thing that stays constant when that happens is enforcement. The rulemaking and the legislative stuff often comes to a dead stop, um, but the enforcement trains keep running. Another thing, another philosophy that Doyle has is to focus more on compliance assistance as opposed to enforcement. So uh, one of the things he's also asked us to do is let's look at more, to, to institute more um, like letters of warning as opposed to issuing formal notices of violations. And really, um, again, focus on that compliance assistance aspect before we turn to the enforcement uh, element. I will tell you, though, that uh, Doyle is not afraid of, uh, of enforcement when it's necessary, and he's really backed us to the hilt on some, uh, some very important cases where we had to go the enforcement route. So, uh, we save over 5 million trees a year by reusing and recycling our cartons. Uh, cartons are one of the most expensive things that we uh, we purchase, and uh, we try, you know, to, to reuse as many times as possible. Uh, a lot of times, the cartons that we're using in our plant have been used seven or eight times before. Uh, so this is a very good. We also uh, bail and sell all of that when they aren't aren't able to be used. We also reduced the amount of packaging material that we have in the market over 10 percent over the last five years. They've done this by making bag sizes smaller, by reducing the overlap, um, and making those sales smaller. We've uh, saved over 15 million miles a year uh, by using these smaller bag sizes and changing case packs. Allows you to get more chips onto a truck, which means you have to make fewer trips to the marketplace. Currently under development, we have, and there are a few of these on the market, uh, I'm not sure which bags they are. We have uh, bags which are made out of corn which is a renewable product and the bags are biodegradable. 
It's one of the biggest uh, issues that we've had is our packaging material because you know, you'll see a Fritos bag alongside the road and it'll be there probably 20 years from now. Uh, with new bags that they're developing, uh, what they've told me is that you take a bag and, and uh, toss it out on the, on the ground and in two weeks it's gone. Um, now I'm not sure how it stays on the shelf, store shelf for a couple of months and then... <laughs> But that's what they tell me. So. <laughs> what I've learned over the past several years, especially working with Bob Berkebile and others in our office, is that when we're talking about sustainability, it really does begin with a conversation. Um, it's not just what is green, but it's what, it's what does it mean to the people in any given building that they're going to work in or community that they live in. It's a much broader perspective. And part of that broader perspective is understanding the idea of this triple bottom line. So it's not... Um, it's not just looking at the lowest cost possible, it's not just looking at the greenest thing possible, it's not just looking at what's good for the community, it's balancing all of those things and, that, and the balancing of those things where they intersect is what we understand to be sustain, true sustainability. Uh, the World Commission on the Environment and Development uses this um, definition of sustainable development or su sustainable design uh, and it brings in the, in, the, in the idea of time which is that we can meet our own needs sustainably but it's not really sustainable unless it's we're providing for future generations and that's something that we're always trying to pay attention to as well.